So the work I will present was done at Fond Bovivas, as already introduced, and it was done in cooperation with the Institute for Robotics and Cognitive Systems from the University of Lübeck, the Medical Laser Center in Lübeck, and the University of Hot University Hospital also in Lübeck. Um, before I want to introduce my guidance approach, um, I want to motivate this. So you may ask what is guidance exactly or what do we need it for? And um, for this, let's consider the following situation. You're a surgeon and you have a patient here, for example, it's a phantom with a vessel inside and you have inserted right now this um, medical instrument and you want to guide it to a specific position inside the um, patient's body. However, it's a minimal invasive procedure we are having here right now. So you have one access point where you inserted your medical instrument and you do not know from the outside where is your tool right now inside the what is fan, um, what is phantom, yes. And for this, we need a guidance. So we need the information. Where is my stand? Where's my stand graph? My instrument I have inserted. And we can see here in red the position here and uh, where is in the vessel. And then we can navigate to the position we want to um, be in at the end. Yeah. In our project, we are um, doing this guidance for a specific use case. So we have here the aorta and uh, we are um, making this for a specific procedure where the vessel is repaired. And this is done by implanting a stand graft, um, which uh, is repairing here the damaged structure. And currently in those procedures, the guidance method, the gold standard for navigating instruments is two-dimensional fluoroscopy with contrast agent. And this method has several drawbacks. So the first one is maybe very obvious. So it's two dimensional. So the third dimension is missing. So we have images like here on the right side and you don't know anything about the deaf information. And this makes the navigation and the guidance very challenging of your inserted instruments. The, third, the second one is that it's uh, X-ray based imaging. So you have radiation exposure both for the surgical team and for the patient. And third, you have uh, a usage of contrast agent, and this is kidney damaging for the patient. So what one ideally wants to have is a guidance, which is three-dimensional and also does not need X-ray or contrast agent in this situation. And to reach this goal, our idea is to use tracking systems. So the first technology we are using is fiber optic shape sensing. Um, this allows us to yeah, track with optical fibers the shape, but it doesn't give the information where the shape is exactly. And for this task, we are using electromagnetic tracking. So um, the sensors give the location, the position and the orientation information, but uh, not the shape of a continuous um, instrument. So only for one specific position, you know the location. And yeah, we combine both positions and then we can uh, have the um, pros, the shape and the location uh, tracking from both methods and uh, enable a three-dimensional guidance without using X-rays and contrast agent. So how have we done that? Um, in this work, we um, tracked a Stancraft system. So we uh, bought a Stancraft system, we disassembled it and integrated the tracking systems. So one optical fiber was integrated in the first uh, part of the Stancraft system. And this allows us to reconstruct the shape of the 38 centimeters um, in the front region. And also we have integrated two EM sensors, one is at the tip and one at the middle. And this allows us to obtain the position and orientation information for both EM sensors. And since we place both EM sensors at the front, it allows an accurate localization at the front part of the Stangraft system. So now is the question, um, how can we combine it to obtain 
uh, three-dimensional information of the tracking system. Well, of course, these are two different tracking systems, so there has to be done a calibration to obtain a special relation between both of them. However, I do not introduce this in the today's talk, but let's assume we have done this already. How can we obtain now a three-dimensional correctly placed shape? And the idea is here to use two positions um, of um, the EM tracking and the corresponding shape. But it's not enough because with two points, you cannot obtain a rigid transformation, which is uh, can be uniquely de uh, determined. So well, you need at least one point more. And the idea here is to use um, the direction information. So both from the tracking electromagnetic tracking, as well as for, from the shape sensing, we know the direction vectors for the two positions. And by adding these direction positions, we obtain two additional positions. So at the end, we have in the NM tracking um, two positions from the second and the first EM sensor, and also what one um, with the additional um, direction vector from the first and from the second. And in the same way, we have this also in the shape space to the two corresponding positions from the M sensors and also two additional points with the direction vectors. And then in the end, we are using um, a point-based registration to compute a rigid transformation to transform the shape um, to the M tracking coordinates in the city space. Okay, so of course we also evaluated our method and for this um, reason we made a vessel phantom to make a realistic evaluation. Um, on the left side you can see the container where we have integrated uh, the 3D printed vessel um, which is um, realistically uh, made with patient data so um, it's a real anatomy um, but as 3D printed with silicone. And on the right, you have the, the final used phantom with agar agar. We added this to have uh, artificial surrounding tissue. So what have we done in our experiment? So we have inserted our Stancraft system by uh, using guide wires and catheters, and then evaluated our method at three different insertion depths. For the evaluation, we made CT acquisitions and the segmentations of the CT acquisitions were used as ground truth. And the measures we are used are the average error and the maximum error. And also we made a continuous measurement of the tracking systems um, during the Stancraft system insertion. So how does it look like? So on the left side, we can see the setup where we have inserted our Stancraft system 20, approximately 22 centimeters. And on the right side, we see the corresponding CT scan and that we can observe that the, um, the shape obtained with our guidance approach here in red is yeah, looking very good. So it's uh, near the ground truth we can see here and it looks really, really promising. So, but what's about the accuracy, the errors? And here you can see the errors um, for all three depths, insertion depths. Um, on the middle, you see the whole 38 centimeter, and on the right side, you see the shape inside the vessel. So for the whole 38 centimeter shapes, we obtained average errors from around one up to two millimeters and maximum errors from around three up to six millimeters. Um, what's about the error inside the vessel? So this is the most interesting part for uh, the surgeons. And here we have even less errors. So we here have an average error from two up, one up to two millimeters, a maximum error from around two or three millimeters. And in summary, this is very promising because the clinical requirements for the procedure, the minimal intervention we are looking at, um, has the requirement that the error has to be um, less or around five millimeters at least. And 
in the end, when we're looking at our accuracies, this is very promising, the results, to use them in the clinical, uh, for the clinical um, intervention. And last but not least, I want to give you an impression how this could look like. So here you have, we have the continuous measurement where the stand-craft system is inserted. Um, this is a replay of fight part, and it shows us yeah, how the stand-craft system is um, moving inside the vessel and everything is yeah, working fluently and it shows us that the guidance is real-time capable. So, um, yeah, <laughs> with this, I'm at the end of my talk. So what I have presented you now is a first Stangraft system where we have integrated uh, multi-core fiber and two EM sensors, as tracking systems. We have introduced a novel three-dimensional guidance method, which is very promising because uh, it allows to reduce X-ray imaging and contrast action administration. And in future work, we may want to make a further evaluation in real time and want to develop a stand graph guidance and uh, yeah, hope that it will go more into clinical practice. And yeah, with this, I'm really at the end of my talk and I'm, yeah, thank you for my, your attention and open to questions now or maybe later on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you also for the nice talk. And I also hope 